Hey BC, what's up? It's me, yours truly. I am back to post a quick video here. Uh, actually, going to do a couple of videos this afternoon. A couple of video responses of some uh, subs, contests, and things like that that I've been meaning to get around to over the past couple weeks. And finally got a moment to kind of sit down and do it. So I'm going to do the first one here uh, in a response to Dana, her contest. Uh, I forgot how many subs it was for. I should have went back and looked before I started the video. But... Um, yeah, I'm sure you know you guys know her. You know, digging in the crate. She has a great channel here, and one of the things that I truly love most about her channel, and I, I mention this in just about every comment I leave on, on her her videos, is that I love how the needle drops that she does within her videos, where she'll talk about an album and you know kind of share what she likes about it and all that good stuff, and then in between she'll do like. 10 15 second needle drops of a few different songs on that album and, you know the way she kind of used just the, the video editing stuff and then go on to the next one that she shows and and I absolutely love that because I have discovered so much new, new music through her especially with a lot of the jazz and psych stuff that that she really kind of digs and gets into I mean she's introduced me to a lot of music uh, matter of fact in my most recent finds video I'm going to show a couple records that um that I found based off of her sharing it through her video and doing the needle drop. So, so yeah, hopefully in 2018 moving forward, I hope that's an element that you definitely keep in your channel because that, that's what I love most about it. It's awesome. A lot of re really good stuff. But uh, for your contest, you kind of, you know, it's kind of an end of the year thing. Um, and it, so I think you kind of said you wanted us to share, you know, just three, four, five, somewhere in the neighborhood or whatever, just kind of uh, some of the, the good albums of 2017 that really kind of impacted us that we enjoyed whether it was through stuff that we got stuff that we just kind of really listened to and was digging and all that and not necessarily that albums that came out in 2017 as far as a release year type of thing so yeah so she left it kind of nice and open which was good and so what I did was I kind of put together a mixture between uh, a couple of artists that I really 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 got into this year I really kind of went to another level with them and then uh, I thought 2017 was a fantastic release year a reissue year so I pulled out some of my favorite things that were reissued for 2017 and actually I forgot one that I'll I'll pull out when I, I'll get to that part because I know exactly where it's at actually give me just one second I'll just grab it right now So good, good, blah, blah. Good organization makes things very easy to find. So there was one that I totally forgot about that has to go in this conversation. All right, so let's start off with the um, the two the two main artists that I really got into this year uh, that I've always liked, but I went to a totally different obsessive level with them this year. And the first one would be <clears throat> Linda Linda Ronstant. And this is definitely a you know a fantastic album I discovered by her this year, but really just kind of her as an artist in general. Uh, I mean, I've always known about Linda, always you know liked her stuff and everything, but for some reason this year or 2017, I'm talking here, I just got totally and completely obsessed with her, and um, just started checking out all her old catalog, a lot of stuff in her new catalog that I wasn't aware of, and just. I don't know, I just really, really caught on to another level of just kind of what she does. I mean, just just a, a complete artist. I mean, when it comes to singing, whether it's, you know, some kind of grittier rock and roll soul type of stuff, and then she'll flip on you and go totally country, then she'll flip on you and go totally easy listening and, you know, pull off something like, kind of like, you know, don't know much with her and Aaron Neville's and, uh, just all her great albums, she's just all over the place, and I just developed a total new appreciation for her in in uh, 2017, and just an artist I'm so enjoying and, and trying to get as much of her stuff as possible. On the same lines, that same thing happened with Carly Simon this year, and this was one album that I really, really got into uh, this past year as well. Of course, it's no secrets, and same thing, I guess it's just something in kind of that singer songwriter not actually since I necessarily say that as much as uh, just kind of that 
I don't know. Like it's really getting kind of hard to put into words. Just Carly and Rhonda just really took off for me this year. I just really, really started to like them a lot. So those would be the two artists that kind of went to a different level for me this year. Um, or t again, 2017. Now, my favorite pickups for 2017, again, most of which were just kind of some new, some, new, some reissues, but um, let me just kind of dive right into it. I'll I have four albums and two box sets that were really, really huge. So I'll start off with maybe one of the box sets. Uh, and this is one that I'm sure everyone has kind of seen and known about, you know, the Iron Maiden reissue set of the 1990 to 2015 uh, albums, studio albums. There's some lives in here as well. But uh, this is really cool. I was very happy that, number one, they reissued slash issued some of this stuff because of those of us who have wanted, you know, Fear of the Dark and a number of other things for quite some time. It cost you an arm and a leg to try to get a copy of it. So it was really, really great with them reissuing all these albums. And we're able to complete the set in 2017. So that was fantastic. I was extremely happy about, about that one. Uh, the other great, exciting pickup for me this year was the newest David Bowie box set. That one, sorry about the glare there. Um, but yeah, that was another another fantastic one, the new career, 1977 through 82. I love all of these box sets. I mean, there's only been three so far. But um, yeah, I just hope they continue to do them, you know, all the way up to his, his last collection would just be, you know, fantastic. And they're all beautiful, very very well made. They sound great. The, the books that they include inside them are fantastic. And just beautiful collector's pieces as well as, you know, great, David Bowie pieces. And I was really excited about that one too because when I actually got that, um, I had a bit of a hookup that took place on it. So I actually got it a few weeks, like literally weeks before it was actually released. So uh, that, that was kind of kind of exciting too to think that I may have been the only person in town at that point in time that actually had a copy of it. <laughs> but uh, yeah, so those were definitely the two box sets that I was extremely pumped about and that came out in 2017. As far as individual albums, with all four of these, the reason why I was so excited about them is they were albums that I've been saying for years and years now. I would so love if they would reissue them or issue them on vinyl uh, in some cases. And I had just been wanting for the longest time, been talking about them forever, and all four of them were reissued this year. So 2017 was great with the reissue of this, which was Concrete Blonde Bloodletting. Again, I was never willing to pay 150 bucks or so for some of the original pressings that came out, and even those were pretty scarce. But uh, yeah, fantastic reissue, because I've wanted that album for the longest time. Another great, great reissue, or I think actually issue, I don't know if they've ever issued this on vinyl, was Inya, A Day Without Rain. My favorite Inya album. Love it to death, front to back. This album is fantastic. And yeah, when I saw they issued that on vinyl, that was another awesome one. And maybe my ultimate. I think I've wanted this one. Well, I can't say that. I can't put these in order in any way, shape, or form. I've, I think I've wanted all these equally at some point in time. But the Record Store Day reissue of the Sundays, Static and Silence, which has my favorite Sunday song, which is Summertime. I just melt hearing her sing that song. So that was awesome. And 2017 reissue as well. And then, of course, the Cranberries. Another one, too, that even if you found an original pressing, if you could, you know, they were just hard to come by. And, uh, kind of sad too hearing about uh, what's your name's passing too I just saw that not too long ago so that's that was kind of sad but yeah so that was also a fantastic reissue and one that I'd wanted since I started collecting vinyl so that's where I kind of put things on the 2017 in terms of just you know great albums that come in and that type of stuff I think with the whole boom of vinyl and everything and all the record labels trying to you know cash in like companies do when things start booming um, you know, there's always kind of some downsides to that, but I think also, especially in the, the vinyl world, one of the biggest plus sides to that is the fact that, you know, they're really, really starting to pump out these re, these reissues, uh, trying to cash in on this resurgence. 
Uh, downside, of course, can be quality and all that type of stuff. Um, but still, I got to take the good with the bad. So anyway, Dana, again, congratulations. Um, glad I got a chance to jump on board and do a response to your video. Keep the good stuff coming. Keep those needle drops coming for sure. Love that about your channel again. And um, wish you guys all the best. And as always, we'll see you soon, VC. All right, take care, guys.